Hi all, let's have a look at another fascinating encounter recently between Leela and Stockfish. So the arch rivals of the engine world. This was in the Chesscon Blitz Bonanza, five minutes with a two second increment, round 115. Stockfish was really dominating this event, undefeated. Um, and what happened in this round? Let's have a look. So uh, Leela ID 41786 on this particular part of the tournament. Leela to be upgraded if she could qualify uh, to the next round. So um, d4 from Leela, knight f6, c4, e6, g3, d5. Catalan territory, a favourite of super GMs nowadays as well, who want, want to avoid the Berlin Wall in, in the Royal Lopez. So maybe uh, there's agreements between uh, the neural networks and super GMs for how to get an advantage with white now. Catalan territory. So here, uh, white castling, Stockfish plays d takes c4. Is this the start of a materialistic course? It is actually well known territory still. Queen c2, b5, clinging on to the pawn, but of course weakening the diagonal for the Catalan bishop. a4, b4, knight fd2. This hits the a8 rook. More usual is actually knight bd2 which keeps an eye on the d4 pawn. Bishop b7, for example, this position is thought to be about even. But this is actually extremely interesting, knight fd2, because the d4 square, pawn on that square, is attacked. And in fact, after c6, knight takes c4. Yes, just offering that pawn to stockfish. Can this bait to the fish uh, be so lucrative? What do you think about this uh, pawn sacrifice? Stockfish actually took it. It could actually see nothing wrong with taking here. But the funny thing is, this actually was the same opening gambit, positional gambit, uh, which enabled Houdini to strike a key victory against Stockfish in one of the recent TSEC Cup tournaments. And actually, Stockfish was knocked out, and Leela ended up winning the TSEC Cup. So. There is a concern here if can Stockfish ever not play this line if it is actually really bad or dodgy for black or not really worth taking this pawn. So we see rook d1, queen c5. It looks basically like a long term, if this was to be tagged with a tactical strategic tag, I would say a long term containment sacrifice style because it's the c8 bishop which is really the long-term target but also black's pieces generally whites uh, got this d file control and very nice knights especially the c4 square for white is nice we see here if the queen had gone to g4 uh, bishop f4 this position it seems here white could actually get an advantage with knight e4 this sets black some problems. For example, here white's getting a small edge. So it supports things like bishop d6. Yeah, slicing into these dark squares, exchanging off the dark square defender, keeping a blockade on the c5 square. It's, it seems pretty nice. So anyway, uh, we see queen c5, bishop e3. The queen wants to go here to to threaten knight g4. Is this a bit on the cheap side? This is the sort of stuff I do all the time in bullet chess. In those tournaments, you, you need to win as many games as possible. Quick checkmates are the order of the day. But here, is this appropriate behavior from Stockfish? Knight bd2, knight g4. It's not really threatening checkmate though, but it is hitting e3 and h2. And in fact, the second temptation for Stockfish, and we've seen this all before, Houdini, was playing white and played basically the same thing, offering the e free bishop. So that was taken, a6, knight c4. Uh, you might wonder, by the way, why on earth a6 of all moves? Yeah, it's 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 quite interesting. a6 is uh, volunteered as a move here. Uh, maybe in certain circumstances, the a7 square is good for the queen. Uh, if the queen's getting kicked, or yeah, it's it's a remarkably interesting move in its own right. A6. Um, 
but uh, also the use of a7 it seems you know with white having that pressure on c6 this is quite awkward for black to develop the pieces with that c6 issue so giving a7 for the rook or or the queen potentially knight c4 in fact it is the rook that uses a7 okay so black is trying to crawl out with the extra pawn here rook ac1 queen f5 queen b3 queen c5 knight f e5 it just looks so pleasant this position uh, black's development is inhibited that d file pressure the pressure on c6 we see rook c7 but has stockfish gone a point it's clinging on to the extra pawn queen f3 and now the queen does actually use a7 as well so both of the things i've said about a7 are actually true now uh, so knight a5 and we see c5 was this all worth it this extra pawn on a dark square means that the light squares are more sensitive and in fact wasn't it the hypermodernist which kind of favored control versus occupation is gobbling an extra pawn and occupying with the extra pawn a form of basically occupation a more materialistic form and from a hypermodernist perspective we just want control of the position does white actually have control of this position i would say for the d file and for the light squares in c4 white does have a lot of control here we see h4 yeah a casual looking move form pawn attack on the cards uh if white was tempted to play this then actually this pin with bishop b7 is okay black ends up being slightly better there that's fine so h4 keeping the tension bishop d7 uh, we see b3 protecting that a4 pawn h6 rook d2 the rooks can potentially double bishop f6 queen f4 holding the knight rook cc8 and now rook d6 it looks as though this is kind of preventative uh, for that c6 square use for example if the rooks just routinely doubled maybe stockfish has got a point in playing bishop takes e5 and knight c6 forking queen and a5 this position wouldn't seem too much for white to write home about uh, so rook d6 keeping control over the position so it is control versus materialistic occupation in a way my chair is squeaking a lot bishop e8 uh here yeah there's no point taking on e5 queen takes here that just loses a piece here of course uh so bishop e8 knight e c4 queen c7 queen drops the e3 now a very tactical move bishop b5 trying to tactically undermine that d6 rook uh, we see rook b6 there's no point white actually taking here the tactics do seem to work out white's got too many loose pieces here the knight's also loose on a5 so say knight b7 it gets awkward uh tactically awkward uh stockfish probably wouldn't mind this scenario at all black's doing very well there so uh rook b6 bishop takes c4 knight takes c4 so black has relinquished the light square bishop but look at the control implications of this on light squares and the lovely light square bishop light square knight here okay black's got the dark square bishop but the control for white is great and that a6 pawn could be the weakness to target pretty soon queen e7 rook d1 bishop d4 queen f4 rook c d8 rook b7 hitting the queen queen f6 the queens get exchanged off bishop takes rook takes rook takes h5 this does seem very interesting positionally black has got big problems here with that knight on b8 especially we see knight bd7 bishop e4 king f8 and now rook a7 targeting a6 knight goes back e3 white's getting control of d4 now rook d7 rook a8 check and then the rook goes back f4 taking control of e5 now bishop c3 
the king comes up, king f3, king e7, king e2, bishop f6, a5 fixing down the a6 target. If targets are fixed, they're more easy to win later. And in fact, bishop b7, yes, it's pretty fixed target. And if white wins that, white is getting a dangerous outside past a pawn. King f8, bishop takes a6. So white has restored material. And now bishop c8, avoiding the exchange of rooks for the moment. Knight e7, bishop b7. Now here the rooks come off. Dangerous past a pawn. Also, the king's a little bit more active at the moment. e4 here, bishop d4, e5, f5. Bishop drops back. Knight a7. G4. F takes. Bishop takes another target. The e6 pawn. King comes up. Knight b5. King e4. Check. King goes back. And now f5 creating a passed e pawn. E takes. Bishop takes. Bishop g1. King e4. And also, of course, not just creating a passed e pawn. There's the potential for a king infiltration now on these squares on these light squares classic that's guarded d5 is guarded knight c3 check now bishop e4 knight e5 a6 the knight has to stand guard for a moment the bishop's not helping this pawn king d7 bishop b7 king e6 king e4 king d7 and now king f5 there's another implication now of king g6 that's very dangerous as well bishop e4 knight a7 bishop d5 bishop f2 king g6 king's driven back bishop drops back yeah it seems as though black is in a very difficult defensive position here with very little to do because that a6 pawn has to be kept under lock and key and in fact here sorry pardon me on uh, move 73 king d7 that's looking bad after king g6 isn't it if g7 is lost this looks extremely bad news king e6 king takes g7 bishop g5 bishop f1 still some work to do but it looks as though the writing is on the wall so to speak uh, so even though Okay, there's no past h pawn, but look at this now. Knight d6. This looks desperate. Yeah, because now there were things like knight f7 and taking correct, correct past h pawn potentially. Yeah, it looks just really bad. This looks very des desperate. Bishop takes, knight takes. The opposite color bishops here uh, do not really seem a saving grace, especially after this crashing through. So why it's just absolutely winning now let's have a look just for the record at the technique queening the pawn giving up the queen <laughs> let's have a look at that in action replay giving up the queen king comes up to win the pawn and that's enough giving up the bishop the one pawn is enough and okay chat mate so I thought this game was interesting because it echoes, it seems, a materialistic, uh, a materialistic kind of weakness in the uh, openings that Stockfish really can't uh, get enough evidence to say that taking on d4 is fundamentally a bad idea. And whilst it can't gather that evidence, it's always going to take on d4, it seems, in this Catalan gambit. But to be fair, there was another game it managed to draw with the same line with black. So maybe it's it needs also some other factors to make this actually winning for white um, to prove a win. So chances are a very complicated game indeed. If you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. Play against other YouTubers. You can also test yourself on the variations of this and other games for the improved menu, the puzzle books option which has a link to the annotated game. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, shares with that notification bell, really appreciated. Thanks very much.